on my drive home from work right now and I got asked today a question that I found kind of funny and that was what's your daily driver because they saw the Jeep and assumed that wouldn't be that wouldn't be my daily driver and some of you might be wondering that but this is my daily driver I drive this thing every day I drive it uh, so I have a commute to work uh, that's an hour so it's two hours both way I drive it there I drive it back I cruise down the highway um, at the beginning of the video, I probably threw up a video of me just cruising down the highway. I, was, I mean, I was 80 miles an hour. And just smooth as can be as long as you ignore the fact that my drag link's a little off, my steering wheel is off, and my bad speed sensor causing a bunch of lights. But um, pretty much the point of this video is to sort of show what it's really like to daily drive a Jeep of this caliber. Because I'm not going to lie, there are sacrifices that have to be made. So I'll start with probably the question that I get asked the most when people see like what this is and that's what's my miles per gallon? So how much am I spending on gas daily driving this thing? And honestly it's not as bad as people would think. So you guys saw in the video, I average about 15 miles per gallon. My speedometer is correct, all that's correct, all that's calibrated. I, have, I average about 15 miles per gallon. So to give you guys an idea of what my commute consists of, I live about 20 minutes from my nearest highway, which is why I take a go to work. So I've got 20 minutes of just in-city driving, normal like four-lane road, traffic lights, traffic, because I leave at eight o'clock in the morning, so I'm peak rush hour. And then I have probably about 40 minutes of highway commute, just 70, 80 cruising. And then another five, about another 10 minutes of just normal in-city driving once I get to store where my, where my work is. So I cover a little bit of everything in that driving. So my miles per gallon is 15, that's for a number of reasons. So, I mean, one, I guess if you think that's bad, it's bad because they're 40 inch tires that has the aerodynamics of a brick. It's never gonna be perfect. Some of you might be saying, hey, I've got this set up or that set up and I'm only getting 11 or 12. So the reason I'm able to get 15 is a couple reasons. One, two doors are light, that helps. Uh, my Jeep has no spare, I've got half doors, I haven't got a crazy amount of armor. It's a pretty light build. Two, I'm geared appropriately. So I've got 538s to turn these 40s, but that means that I, at, so at speed, I'm at a high RPM. So I usually don't cruise past 75. In that video, I went to 80, it's just so smooth, but I usually don't pass 75 on the highway just because that's when my RPMs get super high and then gas just takes a tank. So if you wanna, like, if you have a big Jeep and you're geared and you wanna, if you, and you wanna see how you can save your miles per gallon drastically, especially if you have a commute, don't go 85 on the highway. You'll be surprised. So re like, just next time you're driving on the highway and you're cruising on the left lane at 80, 85, reset your miles per gallon gauge. Your miles per gallon gauge, and you'll be shocked at how little miles per gallon you're getting. And then around town, being with the 538s, the motor doesn't really have to work that hard, so that really helps miles per gallon. Second, so apart from MPG, some of the costs that are associated with driving a Jeep of this caliber. And honestly, for the most part, they're gonna be no different really than your normal lifted Jeep, apart from tires. So these 40s are C-rated NATOs. I go through about every 25, 30,000 miles and they're 1,800 bucks to replace, which is a tough bill to swallow, but it is the reality. Luckily, I only have to do that about every year and a half to two years. So that's not too bad. Noise, so there are big 40s, but they're not bad. So. That's honestly, if you want to dr daily drive a big Jeep, tires are such an important thing to consider. Before this, I had MTRs and 37s, and they 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 got unbalanced, kind of iffy, and my Jeep really didn't drive well, and I just thought, you know, that's just sort of the territory that comes to driving a modified Jeep. That's not the case. My tires are making that Jeep drive kind of crappy. Now on the Nittos, on my second set of Nittos, this thing drives, this thing, drive be this thing drives better than a lot of Jeeps that I've driven on like 35s and stuff. So tires are a huge factor. Another huge factor to driving, to daily driving a Jeep this big, make sure you have the parts to accommodate it. If you want to run 40s, make sure you have the ball joints and the steering and stuff to accommodate it or else you're going to get death wobble and you're going to be miserable. I've got no steering stabilizer on my Jeep. And that's just because I have a lot of big parts to support those big tires. Um, noise, I've had people ask me, how's the noise? I mean, that's not really because it's a built Jeep. You can have a built Jeep with hard top and, and full of doors and be just fine. 
But it is noisy, but that's because I've got half doors, soft top, and honestly, most of the time in the summer, I am not running my windows or my roof either way. Now, as for some of the sort of negative things that a lot of people don't think about, um, one big one is when you're driving a Jeep like this, it grabs a lot of attention, which a lot of people would see as a positive, but there is a double-edged sword to that. Um, yeah, this Jeep grabs attention, people notice it. Uh, honestly, like, in my experience at least, people don't, like, Jeep people notice it, Jeep people will talk to you at gas stations, they'll talk to you about your Jeep, but other than that, most people don't. Uh, some people think they're gonna get more attention than they do, but where that double-edged sword comes in is, I live in South Florida, sometimes I'll have to go to Miami, and sometimes I'll have to go to some crappy parts of Miami. That's where the attention kind of sucks. Um, I'll be driving through areas where it's less than ideal. And, I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There's areas in Florida where the median household income is going to be half of what some of our Jeeps are. And, I mean, I'm a pretty young guy. I, I mean, I'm only 20. Some people won't like seeing me driving this through their area. And some people will get ideas. So it's a little scary sometimes when I have to park the Jeep and leave it unattended because all it takes is a tool kit and you can take a $600 bumper, you can take a $1,700 winch, you can jack it up and take two grand worth of tires on top of a grand worth of wheels. So if you want to have a built Jeep, I, like, I know a lot of people have their Jeep stolen in Miami. So that's one thing that you should really consider if you really want to drive a big built Jeep consider what your commute is like consider where you're gonna be um, if you live in a big city around a lot of less desirable places you may want to maybe buy a beater to daily so you're not driving something so attention grabbing and so look at me come steal stuff inside of this sort of thing um, it's unfortunate but that's the simple reality um, luckily I like, I don't have to go to big cities that often, apart from when I go to Miami. I live in a small town, I work in a small town, so that definitely helps, but yeah, it's definitely something to consider. Um, another thing to consider is you, yes, they're strong. Jeeps are strong. If you get in an accident, you'll be fine, but there's no crumples in it. So if you get in an accident, a lot of that is going to be transferred into the frame. So for 50% of crashes, it's going to be great because you're going to hit and you're going to, you're not going to reach that sort of stress level where the frame will bend. And for 50% of stuff, you can get in an accident and nothing will happen at all. And it's great driving a big lifted Jeep with bumpers. But if you reach that point where that happens maybe in a stock jeep or a normal vehicle you won't reach the point where you'll totally because the crumple zone will take some of that in a big jeep with steel bumpers you don't have a crumple zone anymore so one that puts a lot of toll on your body you're gonna get whiplash from getting a hard accident and two if that frame is bent you're kind of sol um and then there's the whole hassle of having to deal with insurance and payout on a Jeep that has one a crazy amount of money into and a crazy amount of time into. So it's something to consider. If you're gonna if you want to drive a built Jeep or a built rock crawler, make sure you're you have an agreement with your insurance or with your adjuster that you they they know what they're insuring. So that God forbid something were to happen, you're you're covered. Um I for example unfortunately got into a little bit of an accident where it was stopping to go traffic and I couldn't stop in time and I hit something. Um, luckily, it was a relatively slow crash. No one was really hurt too bad. Um, and nothing happened to the Jeep at all. Because it wasn't enough for that for that force transfer of the frame to actually bend anything. So nothing happened to my Jeep at all. But um, when the insurance uh, agent or whatever came to scan like the black box, so for those of you who don't know, cars have a black box. They detect impact, they detect speed, that what impact that happened. So she showed up and she saw my Jeep and two weeks later we had a letter in the mail that they were canceling my policy because they did not want to be held liable for my Jeep. So then I had to find a new insurance policy and they had I had to let them know what my Jeep was. So if you want to go crazy with your build, keep that in mind. 
I'm glad I found that out then and not after I told my Jeep and they're like, we're only gonna cover a stock Jeep. Cause that would have sucked. Um, Cause I've got tons, I've got 40s, I've got a stretch. And a lot of stuff is labor and stuff that can't really be monitored, like you can't put a number on. Um, like all the labor that went into the stretch, that's money that like, even if I can keep those parts, I'll never get back. And I can't really take this Jeep back to stock. Like, I can't put a stock rear axle back in my Jeep because of the stretch. But those are some of the, those are a few things that people won't really mention that you should consider. In terms of storage and stuff, I've got no rear seat, so yes, I've only got two people, but I've got plenty of storage. I like I fit more into this than most SUVs with a second like with five seats. Um, and like I mountain bike, I've got a bike rack in the back, so that's no problem. I can throw all my gear in the back. Me and my girlfriend can put both our bikes. That's not that bad at all. Um, but yeah, honestly. I think that about sums it probably has a weird cut there. Uh, I ran into storage, so I had to delete some videos. But yeah, just to end the video, it's honestly not that bad. Um, there are going to be some more costs associated, like tires. Miles per gallon isn't going to be great, but with the right stuff, you can make it better. Um, and whether it's a good or bad thing, they grab attention. But all in all, I wouldn't look so well. I say I wouldn't change it for a thing. That's not true because I'm actually planning on buying a daily tow pig. But um, I wouldn't change the time I spend daily driving it. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, it's kind of satisfying to be able to go wheel your Jeep, beat the crap out of it, drive home, and drive to work the next day. Um, a bunch of early people riding by. And it's a conversation starter. Uh, I'm at work and employees or clients will point it out and they'll talk to me about it or I'll be at school and people will sort of know me as the guy with the big Jeep and whether it's a good thing or a bad thing um, you get to meet a lot of cool people you get to talk to a lot of cool people all in all it is pretty it, it is pretty fun driving a driving a modified built sort of rock crawler um, but it's not for everyone um, I being big into mountain bikes a lot of the times I want to go on a group ride with more than with more than me or one other person so that's a factor. Um, sometimes I want to be able to have a piece of mind of towing this thing. So like currently I'm saving up to buy a truck and that's, that's just sort of where I'm at now. Um, but that's not where I was for the last four years daily driving this thing and I had an absolute ball with it. So all in all, if you're thinking about it, I'd say go ahead and do it. It's make sure you Get your ducks in a row first. Make sure you can put yourself in a position where you can buy the right parts. Because all in all, it's a lot of fun to daily drive a built Jeep. And if you're thinking about it, think like, make sure you consider all the options. And if it's for you, do it. This is a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to like the video, like the video. Whoa, 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 too much on the If you want to like the video, like the video. If you want to comment on the video, comment on the video. And if you want to subscribe on the video, subscribe. If you want to subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for those subscribers. I know, again, it's not a huge number, but it means a lot to me. Uh, check out, if you, if you don't already, check out the Jeep Instagram page at SoFlow underscore JK. And hope to see you guys on the next one.